there we are, and away we go. We are live. All right. Time to get busy. Time to get cracking. Time to get crack a lacking up in this his house. Are you guys ready for some of this? It. All right. So who do we got here live with us today? Looks like we got uh, Rose Bell in the house. What's up, Rose? She says, hello, everyone. All right. Nathan Milham says, call me SpongeBob because I'm ready. Okay, SpongeBob, whatever you say. Bill Cooper Patriot says, hello. Heather Atkins says, Lincoln, Montana in the house. Robert Cobert throwing up some devil horns. Hey, watch it, buddy. You're, you're praising the devil here <laughs> when you do that. All right. Uh, OJ Toothpaste says, what's up, everyone? All right. Uh, Stephen Crumley says he thinks Megyn Kelly was a man. Well, we just might get into that and a whole lot more. All right. Uh, Aaron Ames says hello from Virginia. Axiom Oblivion says do some gematria. Well, you know, uh, the Pope's birthday uh, happened on a Saturday one time. And of course, we know that the Queen once queefed on a Saturday. Queen queef equals 33. And so therefore, uh, I think that uh, the Capitals are going to maybe make the playoffs in the NHL. Maybe. There you go. That's my gematria. Hopefully my prediction comes true. All right. Yeah, trying to predict with gematria is lame. Uh, we know that uh, elites do like to encode their little... Uh, rituals and their fake sports, but trying to guess how they're going to encode it beforehand can just lead to disaster because then you have to pull numbers out of your own ass and try and plug them in and then hope that that works. And so, yeah, I don't do that. So is Gematria real as far as elites do put shit encoded into their rituals? Like, yeah, they'll make sure to shove the number 33 in their rituals quite often and make it obvious. But trying to predict the outcome of a fake sports game uh, based on, you know, the Pope's birthday and, you know, uh, how many times the queen queefed, that's where it becomes ridiculous. <clears throat> All right. So. We had uh, that OJ deal come and go. You know, he, he died. And so the uh, talk of his trial, you know, it, it resurfaced. And I had to make a video covering, you know, what I thought about OJ. And uh, I don't think that he's currently dead. I think that his character is dead. But I still think OJ Simpson, the person, is still alive. The person playing OJ Simpson is still alive, and I don't think Nicole Brown or Ron Goldman were ever murdered, and I 100% know that that trial was totally fake. So I did a video about that, and uh, many of you guys commented on my video that you think uh, Nicole Brown is now Megyn Kelly, which leads to tonight's stream. We're going to do a deep dive into just that topic, and we're going to... Uh, look at some different uh, evidences to whether this could be a possibility that currently Megyn Kelly uh, was formerly uh, Nicole Brown. 
So that's what tonight's stream is going to mainly be about. And it might sound crazy to those of you who have never looked into the topic at all or who are unfamiliar with the world stage. And I understand some of you guys are newer to my channel. You just found out football's rigged and you're not quite ready to find out that murder trials on TV can be rigged. You're not quite ready to find out that celebrities uh, can fake their death and be repackaged into someone else. So for those of you who aren't ready to hear that sort of information and you can only handle fake football, just come back when fake football season starts. The grown-ups are going to have a conversation here, okay? All right. And I only say that because last night I made just a little community post about possibly Robin Williams being possibly the president of Argentina. And many of the uh, Johnny Come Lately football subs flipped out on me and insulted me. Ad hominem attacked me. And uh, it just goes to show you that there's people who I woke up to sports being rigged who still are TV-watching, brainwashed slaves, who can't quite wrap their mind around anything else other than sports being rigged. So for those people, just come back when football season starts. For those of you who've been around longer than the last two football seasons, you know, those of you who subbed back in 2016, 2017, 18, 19, 20, for those of you who've been here a long time, <laughs> you know this doesn't apply to you at all. Okay, so are you guys ready to have some fun? Let's go ahead and dive into the OJ death and trial real fast. I'll give a breakdown of that so that we can lead into the Megyn Kelly being Nicole info and have it all be cohesive. So we got to start uh, with just a, some mainstream coverage of OJ's death. And there's some little nuggets of evidence that the mainstream throws out there that are going to go a long way in proving my case, that the whole thing's fake. All right. So here we go. The news of O.J. Simpson's death brought a wide spectrum of reaction, as mixed and controversial as his life. Is this your verdict? Ron Goldman was murdered alongside Simpson's ex-wife, Nicole Brown, back in 1994. From Ron's sister, Kim, and father, Fred, this statement. The news of Ron's killer passing away is a mixed bag of complicated emotions. For three decades, we tirelessly pursued justice for Ron and Nicole. And despite a civil judgment, the hope for true accountability has ended. From Cato Kalin, OJ's famous house guest at the time of the murders. To Fred and to Kim, I hope you find closure. And finally, to the family of the beautiful Nicole Brown Simpson, may we always cherish her memories. Marsha Clark, the lead prosecutor in Simpson's murder trial, telling us simply, I send my condolences to Mr. Simpson's family. Carl Douglas was one of Simpson's criminal defense attorneys. Certainly the early part of his career is marked by great milestones and regrettably his legacy devolved in his later years. Look at that cut, O.J. Simpson. As a young athlete, O.J. Simpson was a once-in-a-generation talent, winning the Heisman Trophy at USC. That does it. He broke the record. Before becoming the first running back in NFL history to join the mythical 2,000-yard club in just 14 games for the Buffalo Bills. He was later inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, his charisma making him a beloved TV personality, first in commercials and later on the big screen. Okay, that's a good stopping point. So before the trial ever happened, he was a crossover sports star to movie star. That's a pretty big deal. 
Heisman Trophy winner, uh, uh, Hall of Fame running back, uh, rushing for 2,000 yards in only 14 games, uh, and then crossing over to doing television commercials, and then Hollywood movies. I mean, this man is in the big club before the fake murder trial ever happened. Understand? So this guy was already well known, making him the perfect person to be in this fake trial because the whole goal of this trial was to create a divide between black folks and white folks, a psychological operation designed to divide the masses on a controversial issue. And at the same time, it was designed to be a ratings grabber, a television watching bonanza. Uh, something that would captivate the entire country and even the world and get everybody talking about this thing. So whenever something captivates the world and Hollywood's involved, well, that means it's not legitimate. One of the greatest athletes we've ever seen, but all of that tainted forever and smeared by charges of being a double murderer. Once revered, then reviled, that image of the white Bronco slowly traversing the 405 in Los Angeles is something anyone alive at the time will never forget. And we are told by the California Highway Patrol that O.J. Simpson is in that car holding a gun to his head. His And then, of course, the very slow, very careful car chase, very cinematic. Everyone remembers it. Who could forget the very well-crafted cinematic car chase, perfectly executed with the helicopter filming the whole thing. And, of course, the cops stay way back, and they go nice and slow, almost like it's a parade rather than a police chase, right? A real police chase happens at high speeds, and police, if they really want to stop you, can like shoot your tires out, set uh, strips to, to blow the tires out. They can do the pit maneuver. Oh, no. No, no, no. You don't want OJ to take his own life. So let's go as slow as possible, right? <laughs> Come on, y'all. Come on when you really break it down how cinematic the whole damn thing was and how well captured the whole thing was. You really think things like this just legitimately go down so perfectly to be captured for the television cameras and shown to the television audience so perfectly? The most entertaining made-for-television movie of its time. Wow. Still stands the test of time today. car holding a gun to his head his criminal case known as the trial of the century if it doesn't fit you must acquit lasted 11 months and for many was must see tv the murders also revealing allegations that simpson had abused brown you must acquit lasted 11 months and for many was must see tv It was must-see TV. They just got lucky that a really popular athlete decided to commit double murder, allegedly, and it just so happened to be must-see TV. Wow. The TV stations just lucked out that it all happened, huh? You know, they got to sell ad space while that fake trial was going on, right? top-notch dollar for uh, people wanting to av advertise their products during that television programming. Oh, but no one ever stops to think about any of that. Am I the first person to bring up such a thing? Like, gee, I wonder how much uh, advertisers were paying to get in on some of that action while that must-see TV was going down. How lucky for all those television organizations, you know, all those 
television broadcasting companies, how lucky for them that this must-see TV happened naturally. Just for them. <laughs> See, when you really start to think about it logically, it was must-see TV. Who could forget his Bronco chase? If the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. Ooh, little catchphrase that everyone knows and remembers? Wow. What else do we remember? Oh, remember him trying on the glove one time and then he pretended he couldn't get the glove on, but then the next time it fit perfectly? So it's like people were like, there's two sets of gloves! Ooh! So much stupid crap, but everyone remembers because it was must-see TV. Lucky for those TV stations that this guy decided to allegedly commit a double murder. The murders also revealing allegations that Simpson had abused Brown. According to the AP, Brown wrote a letter alleging Simpson, quote, beat the holy hell out of her. 911 calls also emerging during the trial. Simpson pleaded no contest to spousal abuse charges in 1989, but has since denied the abuse. When Simpson was acquitted, not guilty of the crime of murder, the verdict exposed the racial divide in this country. But the Goldman and Brown families filed a civil suit in 1997 and won. Guilty of the crime of murder. The verdict exposed the racial divide in this country. The verdict exposed the racial divide in this country. The audacity of these liars. No, no, no. They created this. <laughs> God damn it. I had it in my head and then I lost exactly what I was going to say. Let me play the clip one more time because I had it in my head what I was going to say and now I just lost it. Damn it. Ah. When Simpson was acquitted, not guilty of the crime of murder, the verdict exposed the racial divide in this country. Thank you. They created the racial divide in the country. They helped fuel the racial divide in the country with this fake case. They added fuel to the racial divide like gas to a flame with this case. And then through a whole year of uh, propaganda, they got people to hang on this outcome and express their uh, anger or their happiness over the outcome of this trial. And so, of course, when it was said to be not guilty, you can see in these uh, photos here, the camera cutaways, all the black people go, yay! <laughs> and all the black people go, oh, the fuck? Or, I mean, all the white people, yeah. Did I say that right? <laughs> okay. See what I'm saying? So they got, they got the, uh, the camera focused specifically on black people being happy and specifically on white people being upset. And then they show this to the world. Does that help expose the racial divide or does it help increase the racial divide? You see what I'm saying? So they're the ones showing you, here's a room full of black people. Here's a room full of white people. Here's their different reactions. Yeah, seems to me they're helping fuel this divide. They want there to be this divide. That's why there is this divide. And so, yeah, they basically forced you to take a side. And of course, I was, uh, a white kid when this happened and you know have white parents 
And so they were like, fuck, I can't believe he got away with that. That's literally like almost every white person's attitude was like, that son of a bitch got away with murder. And then you would hear stories like, oh, I heard he went in to eat at this restaurant and everyone got up and left. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so on the other end, pretty much everyone who was black was like, not guilty. Awesome. Awesome. I don't know whether he actually killed that bitch or not, but I'm glad it's not guilty. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. So what are the chances that this thing naturally happened, was totally legit, was made for TV ratings bonanza, uh, must see TV. That's what I meant. It was must see TV just naturally. And it naturally divided the country even more so. Or as the news would have you believe, it exposed the racial divide. Ah, okay. But the Goldman and Brown families filed a civil suit in 1997 and won. Simpson was ordered to pay them $33.5 million, but only paid a fraction. Simpson was ordered to pay them $33.5 million, but only paid a fraction. One, Simpson was ordered to pay them $33.5 million, but only paid a fraction. Naked gun, 33 and a third. Remember that? <laughs> they might as well have just said he was ordered to pay 33.3 million, right? But no, they didn't want to be too much on the head. So they said 33 and a half. Good one. Totally not going to catch that. <laughs> and he only paid a fraction. Ooh, oh, okay. So it's kind of like Alex Jones having to pay a billion dollars to some Sandy Hack actors, but he doesn't actually have to. Uh, I get it. It's like that, huh? He was ordered to pay 33 million, but you know, he didn't. <laughs> Love it. Does anyone still think it's all real? Jake. You're wrong, man. He did kill them people. And you're just being crazy. I had a few people tell me I'm just saying stuff like this to get clicks. That I'm just saying this to be funny or edgy. No. This is actually stuff that I'm covering for real. This trial was fake. So I'm covering how it's fake. Then I'm going to get to the even more crazy part about... Nicole Brown becoming Megyn Kelly, possibly. And so I'm just telling you, hey, if you can't handle something like this, maybe you should just wait till next football season. For those of you who are following along and you hear the 33 and you're like, dude, Jake's totally nailing this one. Hey, I'm here for you, bros. All right. I was fooled for years over OJ too. So I'm not trying to make it out like when I was a little boy, 10 years old, watching this, that I knew it was fake. Dude, I was duped by this for many, many years. I'm just now looking into the Megyn Kelly stuff because I just never really looked into the Megyn Kelly thing. And so, dude, uh, don't be mad if you're just now figuring out or, you know, don't be upset if you're just now figuring out these this uh truth about the oj trial being fake because people figure things out you know uh, at different times of their life and so i was duped over this for years bro so don't feel bad if you're just now coming to the conclusion that this was fake that's what i'm here to do is help people wake up and we're all at different points in our truth journey 
And so there's people here that figured all this out many years ago, you know, before I did even. So I only get angry at the people who just showed up to my channel like six months ago because of my football content who tell me not to talk about stuff like this and only stick to football. Those are the people who I get pissed off at. All right, here we go. Diving back in. Oh, got the first super chat of the night. Miguel says, Jake's edgy enough to give Reggie Bush a wedgie. <laughs> That's a good one, dude. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say anything quite like that to me. That's the first time that sentence has been uh, ever said on my channel, to my knowledge. Thank you very much, Miguel, for the uh, donation. And yes, I am edgy enough to give Reggie Bush a wedgie. All right. In 2008, a Las Vegas jury found him guilty of armed robbery and kidnapping. Simpson claiming he was simply trying to recover stolen sports memorabilia. He served nine years in prison before his release in 2017. After that, Simpson kept a low profile. Reports circulated in February that Simpson had been diagnosed with prostate cancer. In a video posted on X, he denied he'd been in hospice care. Hospice? Hospice? You talking about hospice? As recently as February, continuing to insist his health was good. Thursday, his family announcing he succumbed to his battle with cancer. In their statement, Simpson's family asked people to respect their wishes for privacy and grace. O.J. himself never mentioned that he was battling cancer. And by the way, a family attorney for the Goldmans has said the debt that Simpson owed to them has ballooned to over 100 million now with interest and that Simpson died, quote, without penance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was the mainstream news story. And of course, they had to throw in their 33 million in there, right? <laughs> and now it's up to 100 million. Yeah, but you know, he's never going to pay any of that because it's fake money and a fake story. <sighs> so who cares? All right. Marcus Miller coming in with a donation says, bro, you're great. We appreciate you. Bro, you're great. And I appreciate your super chat donation. Thank you. It looks like I got another one coming in from another great bro who says OJ was fake, was in the fake Mars Landing movie. I haven't watched that one. So I guess that was like the first movie he was in, Capricorn One or whatever it's called. And I have never watched that movie. So that's like one I might have to go back and watch for like research purposes. I just don't like watching movies anymore because sitting and watching anything for two hours is just boring to me. But I should probably go back and at least watch part of that movie just for my own research. So thank you very much, uh, Cherry Dr. Pepper 7, for the donation. And yes, I uh, have heard that OJ was in that movie. Now, the only movie I saw with OJ was the Naked Gun movies. I never saw any, or no, he was in, I think he was in Roots 2. Or Roots 1, not Roots 2. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that brings us to the topic of Nicole Brown wasn't actually murdered and then became Megan Kelly. And here's the thing. I didn't make up this theory. So I'm not just making this up to get clicks. This isn't something I created to trick people or anything like that. This is a theory that other people, lots of people have come up with and there could be some weight to it. So if you just Google the two names together, you end up with just interesting comparisons in the face, facial features that look the same, articles discussing how people think this, and how this theory has run rampant on uh, X, Reddit, TikTok, and all that stuff. And you have to admit, there is a bit of a resemblance. Now, one thing people do say, 
whenever I say that this person might be this person, I always get someone who says, they don't look anything like it all. And to that person, I say, shut up. Yes, they do. And they're not going to just have the same person change nothing and pretend to be someone else. So they're always going to have some alteration to their look. They're going to have some sort of disguise as not to look exactly like the person they used to be. So if I say this person is now playing the role of this person, maybe, and you say, they don't look anything like each other at all, you're the type of person who I don't listen to at all. Because, of course, they're not going to have, you know, Megyn Kelly look exactly like Nicole Brown without changing a goddamn thing. Understand? They're going to change at least something. Just like they're not going to have uh, Alex Jones come out looking exactly like Bill fucking Hicks, right? Or sounding exactly like Bill Hicks. If you're going to have one celeb play the role of a different celeb, they're going to have to change some shit. So before anyone says, they have some differences, so therefore impossible, uh, don't even try it. Okay, I got a shitload of super chats coming in at once. Let me shut up and read them. Saul Rosenberg says, number nine, number nine, number nine, Illuminati confirmed. Thank you, Saul. Your super chat confirms that you must be some sort of uh, Illuminati member who's paying me off. Either that or people are going to say Saul Rosenberg is my handler and he's tipping me for doing my job. <laughs> right? That'd be another good one. We're forced to tell the truth, right? Truth in plain sight. Saul Rosenberg is my handler and he's paying me off. Now watch, some shill is going to put that in a video exposing me as proof. All right. Patrick Harner says, Jake, I appreciate your thoughtfulness in helping others to think critically and to question everything. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I'm here for, man. To prove that the government lies. We've been fed a bunch of lies and I can't always prove every single thing that I talk about for sure, for sure, but I am trying to increase awareness and get people to pay attention to these things. So in this case, I can't prove to you 100% that Megyn Kelly uh, was Nicole Brown or is Nicole Brown. I can't prove to that 100%, but I can at least get people to look into this topic and come to the conclusion that in Hollywood, you can replace a celebrity with, with a different person. You can have a celebrity fake die and then play the role of someone else. It is possible. So at the very least, I want to open people's minds to these possibilities uh, because there are still people dismissing, you know, the notion of a celebrity dying uh, and it not being real. So there's still people who come at me sideways if I say Tupac isn't dead. They're like, bro. You're crazy if you think Tupac isn't dead. It's like, dude, that's not crazy at all to think Tupac's not dead. It's totally sane to think he's not dead. What's crazy is to believe the TV. Okay. Thank you, Patrick Harner, for your donation. I appreciate that, buddy. And then I got another one that came in, a generous donation. Let me pull it up. Uh, Vex Luther with a do uh, very generous donation says, I am from Buffalo area, but a small town called Middleport, which is an hour away. I met OJ in a place called the Basket Factory, and we talked for 45 minutes. He took an interest in me because Wayne Patrick was my boss at the time who used to block for OJ. Cool. Yeah, I've heard stories of people seeing him come into a restaurant. And then they, they said that they witnessed people getting up and leaving. So I heard probably several times that so-and-so saw him come into a restaurant and almost everyone in the restaurant was disgusted by him being there and got up and left, stuff like that. So, yeah, you know, I, I'll bet you that he went around and still lived out his life 
you know, and he probably didn't care at all what people thought because he knew deep down he's just playing the part, you know, and he's doing what he's told. So OJ, the actor, you know, he played this role where he got to be beloved football star, movie star. He got to be uh, the villain where, you know, many people in the world hated him and was hoping that he would be sentenced to death. And then, you know, he got to get uh, humiliated, go through a humiliation ritual by getting busted for stealing his own merchandise <laughs> from a collector and, uh, and doing some fake time in prison. So he's had quite the interesting life. And it really, when you look at it, makes a perfect story. And you'd have to be a total brainwashed slave to believe the whole story was legit. Thank you very much, uh, Vex Luther, for the generous donation. I appreciate that, brother. All right. So let's dive a little more into this Megyn Kelly deal. Um, so Megyn Kelly uh, gets told by people online every day that she's Nicole Brown. And so this isn't some cuckoo conspiracy theory that I concocted myself or whatever. Like I said, there's a, a big community of people who are calling out Megyn Kelly as being Nicole Brown to the point where Megyn Kelly had to come out and say that she is not Nicole Brown. So just recently, like a few days ago, Megyn Kelly went uh, on YouTube and made a video or here on YouTube, made a video and said that she's not Nicole Brown and that the whole uh, theory is just crazy. And she even had Adam Carolla join her, who's another puppet who I hadn't seen in years. And so I'm going to go ahead and show that and we'll discuss why she had to make a video addressing such a crazy theory. Why there's so many people who think such a crazy theory is true if it's so crazy. So here it is, and she has 1.85 million subscribers here on YouTube. And before we get started, uh, I know people are going to say that this person might not be female, and that could be the case. But I want to focus on, is this person Nicole Brown? first before we get to other stuff there's a weird thing online that i want to talk about there is a conspiracy theory and it's been around for a long time since i became a public figure that i am nicole brown simpson that she and I are actually the same person. This is a thing, you can Google it. And of course it was all over the place yesterday. It was all over my mentions yesterday, people tweeting pictures of the two of us at me in my comments. And this is the first time I really went down the rabbit hole with any you know amount of time. And I have to tell you, it's amazing to me how many people have given real thought to this. They were having arguments about how it could be, how it might not be, about how I have like a more heart-shaped face and she had a more square jaw, about how somebody really needs to check me for the scars from like whatever operation I had to transform. I think the theory is I was, I am right now actually Nicole Brown Simpson, that I wasn't actually murdered, that somehow Hollywood staged this or did something to make it look like I had died. And then I came back as journalist, Megan Kelly. And I. So there she is talking about this theory about her that tons of people believe. And I don't know for sure, for sure, if it's true. Is there some resemblances between these two people? Yeah. And. I dove in a little deeper, as I tend to do, because let's face it, she's having to make a video about it. 
so it must really bother her. Or she's been told to make this video <laughs> and say for sure it is not her. So we have to consider that it might be her and she's making a video saying for sure it's not her. Because there is a video of Akil the MC saying for sure he's not Tupac. And there's a shitload of people who say Tupac is Akil the MC. So does that mean we listen to Akil the MC if he says he's for sure not Tupac? <laughs> you get where I'm going with this? We have Alex Jones, you know, jokingly saying that he is Bill Hicks and also saying he's not Bill Hicks. So does that mean he definitely isn't Bill Hicks? So whenever one of these celebrities addresses the theory that they are a, another person, have been playing a, a double role, uh, I always find it fascinating. I don't know about you guys. All right. Let's continue a bit, and then I'll get into some things that I found that I think I can really blow this whole thing open even more so. All right. I guess also decided to make myself a public figure. I didn't decide to leave this, lead this quiet life, you know, having gotten away with this ruse. I decided to go back on the air under the name Megan Kelly. And there was somebody online defending me saying, no, um, he, here's what he says. Hold on. He says, oh, here's, here's just some back and forth before we get to him. Okay, we've got to check for scars. Indeed, it was all fake. This is a bunch of different people weighing in. Her jaw is totally different. Can cosmetic surgery change a jaw? It can, but I've never had cosmetic surgery on my jaw. This is my natural born chin, madam. Um, so if a celebrity says that they haven't had surgery, are we to believe for sure they're telling the truth because celebrities aren't allowed to lie about whether or not they had surgery? <laughs> Didn't Michael Jackson used to like lie about the number of surgeries he had, you know? So there's plenty of examples of celebrities who have obviously had some work done, but they don't cop to it and admit it. Gee, imagine that, a celebrity lying about having work done. So do I take uh, her word for it? No, of course not. Can I prove that she definitely has? No, I can't either. So I, I don't have video of her like getting the surgery or anything. But I don't have definitive proof that, you know, she's telling the truth either. In fact... When I go back and look at old pictures, well, let me just show you when I go back and look at some old pictures, and then we'll come back to this. But uh, take a look at this person now. This is the current Megan. See? See? Okay. And then I'm going to pull up some pictures of her from years ago and we'll just contrast so check check out this picture a little different of a, a chin here huh wouldn't you say i think this chin don't quite look the same to me this chin not quite the same as the one that we just looked at to me see what i'm saying so when I look at some old pictures, I see more of a square jaw. And this is Megyn Kelly, just older pictures. So for a lady who says she's never had anything done to her jaw, just looking at some older pictures, I'm not so sure. All right. And another thing I want to point out, in this picture right here, I can see makeup caked on her face, and I can see, like, pores and wrinkles, whereas the current 
video of her, it's as if she's been run through a filter in post-production and doesn't have a single pore or wrinkle visible. So check it out. Anyone thinking she's too young, look at her face. She's a 50-year-old lady, a 53-year-old lady who has zero wrinkles. Not a single wrinkle on that face. I've seen 50-year-old women up close, and you know what? They don't have perfectly smooth skin like that. And if you wear a shitload of makeup, you can see the makeup clumped on someone's face. So, how is it that she's getting such perfectly smooth, non-wrinkly skin? You know what it is? Post-production editing. So, if you can make someone look 10 years younger through post-production editing, I don't want to hear a goddamn person say, Jake, she's too young to be Nicole Brown, because there's only an 11-year difference between the two. Nicole Brown is supposed to be like 63, and, and she's supposed to be 52, Megan Kelly. So only an 11-year difference. So don't anyone tell me that she's too young. Because I see a woman on screen without any wrinkles, which is impossible. So how the hell did they do that? Oh, well, post-editing in 2024, they can make you look like you're 14 years old now. You have the skin of a 15-year-old girl, right? So... Can a 60-year-old lady be made to look like a 50-year-old lady? And can a 50-year-old lady then be made to look even younger? Yeah, of course. See what I'm saying? So don't anyone act like there's too big of an age gap. It's 11 years is the age gap. Not too big. Pretty easy, actually. So let me go back and show you those old pictures again, now that I just made that point, and show you, look, she's got a wrinkle right there, and over here, and over here, I can see makeup clumps, I can see pores, if I was to really zoom in, we'd really see it, right, I don't need to zoom in much, I can just see things in her face. That's how a face is supposed to look like. I can tell she's got a shitload of makeup clumped on her face in that photo. In fact, I'll just peel it off and zoom in. Why not? Why not? That way you guys can see it nice and big on your end. Oh, oh, I'm so, yeah, we're, de I'm definitely doing this to make my point now. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Uh, stop screen. Present. There we go. Check out the wrinkles here. <laughs> That's what I thought. All right. I got some super chats coming in. Let me rustle them up like Kurt Russell. Okay, uh, we got one coming in here from The good senator says, I would love to hear your take on Mark Dice. Thanks for the great content, as always. Uh, he seems to be uh, like an establishment YouTube guy. So a guy who will give you a little more truth tidbits than the mainstream news, but still won't break down all the conspiracies like at the level I would. You know what I mean? So it's almost like, he has a limit to what he can talk about, and he's only allowed to go so far. I also heard a rumor that he was uh, 
River Phoenix. I can't, I, I haven't really looked into it hardcore, but someone said that he was River Phoenix. And that when they called him out for being River Phoenix, he blocked him. I don't know if that means for sure he is, but might be something I'll have to look into in a future uh, stream. But check out the face here. And you see how you can see the pores and the wrinkles? Oh, wait, and I got another super chat before I get to rambling. I don't want to miss it. I got several super chats coming in. Uh, Tom says, are they the same height? Uh, as long as they're within a few inches or whatever, it won't matter because somebody on TV, how would you know? You can't measure them. So the WWE is known for adding three, four inches to everyone's height. They'll, they'll, you know, the WWE will tell you Undertaker is seven feet tall and he's not. They'll tell you the big show is seven foot tall and he's not. So you can lie about height. And Gotis, the natural, says it's because Megan Kelly eats raw meat, so to speak. The reason why Megan Kelly looks so much like Nicole Brown is because she eats raw meat, of course. It is very natural to look like Nicole Brown when you eat raw meat. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, all that glitters is old with a generous donation coming in. Says great show, Jake. These super chats are tax deductible as we use your content to homeschool our children. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. <clears throat> all that glitters is old. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> your child is growing up with uh, with the education from Jake the asshole. He'll be the smartest kid on the block for sure. <laughs> thanks man i appreciate it i really do and uh mike tobin music with a donation says what's up jake do you have a twitter uh i i need to start a twitter and an instagram i'm slacking on all that stuff so the only social media i i have is a facebook and i don't even really post on that i mainly just post links for my youtube videos and so um, I don't spend much time on the social media sites because it, it, it takes up a lot of time. But I'm noticing that like I'm paying the price and not getting as much views as I could be getting. I'm not getting as much traffic to my YouTube channel as I could be getting. Uh, I'm not getting, um, you know, as much attention to my my brand, I guess you could call it, by not including that stuff. So I probably should include a Twitter and an Instagram and just bite the bullet and try and include all that stuff. Because I hear stories of people posting my content on Twitter or X and, uh, and Instagram and getting millions of views. Meanwhile, I don't even get millions of views. So I saw there was one guy that posted my NBA video on X and got like a million views in a couple days. Meanwhile, I got less than 10,000 views here on YouTube with the same video. So apparently there's people like killing it with my content <laughs> on those platforms. So I should probably go on over there and try posting my content as well. Thank you very much, Mike Tobin Music, for the donation. I appreciate it. My man Tom coming in with a donation. And Tom, I got to apologize for the last stream uh, I missed some of your super chats because you sent a bunch of them and I got to rambling and a few of them slipped past me. So I'm sorry for missing like two or three of your super chats last time, bro. You donated a bunch of times and uh, I felt bad that I didn't read a few of them. So Tom says, not guilty verdict for a black male during the Rodney King era makes sense. That was probably a distraction as well. At the time, OJ was huge and Holly weird. Uh, so check it out, Tom. Uh, if you really think about it, everything on TV is going to be scripted and fake. If it's going to be, you know, attention grabbing and controversial and create a racial divide, it's for sure going to be underneath their control. So I've had people 
claim that the king beating was just nerf batons. So if you think of a baton made out of material that's not going to hurt you if you're getting hit with it, and then you just have a dude lay on the ground and then get hit with some nerf batons, suddenly not so much of a beating, is it? So once somebody said the word nerf baton, I was like, yep, yeah, that, that would be all you would need. <laughs> Shit. Be just as easy as a Nerf baton. I mean, pro wrestling is more real than a lot of the shit we see, y'all. Pro wrestling, they actually hit each other with real chairs for real over their backs and heads. And they cut, they cut themselves open with a razor blade to produce blood. So in pro wrestling, they legitimately will slice their own head open to make it look as if they got busted open by a chair shot or something. And, and it's more real than what they do in Hollywood and on TV. So I find it fascinating that people know pro wrestling is fake and call it fake. Meanwhile, pro wrestling is actually more real than a lot of the fake shit on TV that people think is real. All right, so let me get back to my point about how, okay, everyone focus on Megyn Kelly's face right here. And you'll see that, like, she's got pores, right? You can see in her face she's got wrinkles and stuff, right? So this is what a face looks like when you have a bunch of makeup on it. So you can tell she's wearing a buttload of makeup, right? Okay, so let me go back to the video, and you can tell there's a filter over the face that has removed all the wrinkles and pores and everything to where it's a featureless face that we're looking at. That is, you cannot be over 50 years old and have a face that looks like that. Not even with makeup alone. You would need some digital assistance. So I'm saying that she has had, through post-production, work done on this video. Professional work has been done to this video through post-editing to make sure that her face has absolutely no wrinkles of any kind, not a single line, so that people think she's way too young. She doesn't quite, she doesn't look like Nicole. There's no way it could be Nicole, see? Goldilocks says, Trump said she had blood coming out all over. People flipped out, probably pointing out her role. Yeah, see, on uh, in a fake Hollywood trial, they can show you, you know, somebody all bloody. But then somebody who really dies, they won't show you. So whenever it comes to somebody, you know, actually really being killed, and you know, they won't show you that. But they'll show you, you know, some fake dead people. Thank you, Goldilocks. I appreciate the donation. All right. So, I had several people try and shoot me down before the stream started by suggesting Nicole would be too old. Megan is too young. I'm just pointing out that if you were to remove every pore on my face and every line on my face, and then show it to a stranger who doesn't know me. You could say, this is a 30-year-old man, right? Well, I'm 40. So you could easily make me look 10 years younger. In fact, if I don't dye all my gray hair, <laughs> it makes me look older, right? So I would just argue that this person could have had surgery on the jaw and be using makeup, Hollywood-grade makeup artist, and uh, post-production editing. Is that too far out of the realm of imagination? Come on, not at all. All right, so let's continue with her telling us that she's not Nicole. 
This is my natural born chin, madam. Um, I imagine the DNA must be on file. Then somebody responds, not a chance. I said this earlier, Megan Kelly dated my uncle for years while they were both at Syracuse. He's in her book. She used to babysit me. This is all total BS. You are correct into thin air. I am a real person with a whole independent history having nothing to do with Nicole Brown Simpson, who was very clearly murdered back in 1994. And I don't know what this says about us, Adam, but I do think it's important in our society to somehow try to maintain some distance between COVID starting in a lab is a conspiracy theory and you're a nutcase. And people who believe there are lizard people work, you know, walking amongst us and that I'm reincarnation or the current version of Nicole. Like, I do worry that like getting from the first group, which are not conspiracy theories, they're just labeled such, um, into the second group, which are genuinely unhinged beliefs. So she's basically in a roundabout way saying anyone who believes this story about her, that she used to be Nicole Brown and doesn't believe the official story that Nicole was murdered. Well, you're basically like someone who believes in lizard people. And this is an entirely different type of conspiracy theory than believing that uh, the boogeyman disease was created in a lab. <laughs> nice way. See how she tries to paint out one conspiracy theory, COVID created in a lab. Oh, that's an entirely different deal than these crazy cuckoo lizard loving people who think that I used to be Nicole Brown. Ah, see the way she's trying to muddy the waters here. She's the one telling you how crazy each theory is and they shouldn't be grouped in with each other. And then she needs Adam Carolla here to agree with her. Like, what the hell is Adam Carolla doing here? Why is he here? Oh, it's to agree with her and then make jokes about these crazy cuckoos who are saying this about her. Drew Bones says she shows pics, pics of herself at age five is proof. Yeah, man, but we live in an age where you can create fake pics of anyone and pass it off as real. How would you know, right? If you don't know who someone is until 2000-something, and then they say, here's a picture of me when I was five, but it's a CGI-made picture, how, do you, how would you know? See what I'm saying? Like we're in an era now where AI can create fake people that look like real people. And the news can say that this fake person died who doesn't even really exist. And they can show a picture of a fake person created by AI on TV. And it'll look like a person, but that person ain't real. See? So they can easily just have a computer AI program take a picture of a real person and create a fake picture of them when they were a kid. And I'll bet you it would be realistic enough that if they tried a bunch of times and picked the best ones, that they could fool TV watchers. <laughs> All right. All right. Now my favorite part, they're going to mix in flat earth into this conversation. Flat earth is somehow going to come up in this conversation. In a video that is six minutes and 33 seconds long. Just luck of the draw. Now, I know sometimes when I make a video, I, without thinking about it, have accidentally had videos be uh, lengths that people would consider Masonic. But uh, I'm not tied back to a major conspiracy like this, saying that I'm definitely not Nicole Brown. So I think it's more telling when you see that the the length of the video just happens to be six minutes, 33 seconds long. That's something to look at. And Adam's about to bring up flat earth for no reason. Or is there a reason?
I don't know. Is, is that the path? Like, does one go from being called a conspiracy theorist into actual conspiracy theories? Or how and why is this happening to the second group? Well, it's interesting. You're right. If you create flat earthers and lizard people and all that, then they will lump side effects from the vaccinations and lab origin or origin of the virus or people who uh, take ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine, then you'll get lumped into the lizard person flat earther group. And there you have it. Lizard people, flat earther group, you know, the crazy unhinged weirdos who are messing up the real legit conspiracies. <laughs> like the boogeyman disease being started in a lab and uh, side effects from the jabberoo. Nice try, Adam. Nice try. But the Earth is not a globe, and the government does lie, provably, about space travel. So, flat earthers weren't created to take away from these other real conspiracies. Oh, no, no. The flat earthers exist because the Earth is not a globe, and they figured it out. See how deep this goes, you guys? It goes deeper than just a fake murder trial. It goes deeper than just Megyn Kelly might have been Nicole Brown. Now we got Adam Carolla shoving lizard people and flat earth into this while saying for sure Nicole is not Megyn Kelly. <laughs> Why did they have to do this? Why was this created? If it's so crazy and stupid, and not that many people would, no smart person would believe in this, well, then why are they taking the time to make this video in the first place? Is it to ensure that no smart people fall for such a crazy thing? Hmm. Is that why? And of course, uh, Adam Carolla used to sit next to Dr. Drew, mainstream Dr. Drew, right? Who believes everything that mainstream science and mainstream media has to say. Dr. Drew, which rhymes with what? Dr. Drew the... Uh, yeah. So he used to sit next to Dr. Drew and do a radio program called Loveline. And now here he is showing up uh, and helping Megyn Kelly say that she's not Nicole Brown. <laughs> I don't know why he was picked for this. It's very strange, but okay. Yeah, it, it's, that is Adam Carolla. That's not being debated. So that's, that's Adam. And for whatever reason, he was picked to help Megyn Kelly say that she's not Nicole Brown, or he really wanted to do this. Out of the goodness of his own heart, he really wanted to be a part of this video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which as would be pretty effective if you were trying to throw a little mud and, and tarnish the reputation of somebody who believed in something that was real, like origins of COVID, uh, and then smear them. So there is something sort of diabolical about it. Uh, I feel your pain. I'm mistaken for Greg Brady of the Brady Bunch uh, quite a bit. And <laughs> He said he was mistaken for Greg Brady. It was so funny that Megyn Kelly laughed just like I did because it was such a funny, good joke. So it's a serious subject. All these crazy, unhinged cuckoos think that Megyn Kelly used to be or was Nicole Brown. 
But Adams here got a little comic relief. People think he's Greg Brady. <laughs> and there you have it. The whole thing's just dumb and not worth looking into. David uh, D. LaFlair says, over 700 in the chat. Hit the like button. Yeah, I noticed the numbers jumped up significantly over the last uh, hour or so. Smash the uh, the thumbs up if you uh, are digging what I'm laying down. It goes a long way to uh, making the algorithm think that I'm awesome. I think that's what happens. Make the algorithm think I'm awesome by hitting the thumbs up button. And then maybe YouTube won't be such a bastard and bury my videos and unsub people. But that's probably asking too much, right, YouTube? No, when I finish this stream, no matter how many people watched, no matter how many people liked it, there's going to be 15 subs gone from my list. Just gone. And you know what? Some of them are going to show up in the next few days and be like, Jake, I got unsubbed from your channel again. YouTube unsubbed me. And I'm like, yeah, I know. They've been doing that for years. And whenever I mention it, there's always somebody who says, no, people are just choosing to unsub from you. YouTube doesn't unsub anyone. Oh, yes, they do. And they've been doing it for years. This channel could be up to 750,000 subs if they would have left me alone and let me grow naturally. So what I'm getting at is hit, hit the thumbs up button, I guess. <laughs> Sorry for my long rant, <laughs> but I swear every day they steal subs from me every single day. All right. Jonah says, Jake, you are right. Oh, thank you, Jonah. I appreciate you ensuring that I am right. There's a lot of theories online as to whether there's two of us or just me. And then why would I go into media? But let's not make well, we this need a split screen of that. Uh, We're going to work on that. Please. Yeah, I don't. It's very I mean, I'll give you some of uh, the let's see. I mean, this is just fr from yesterday, but these pop up in my timeline all the time. Nicole Brown Simpson versus Megan Kelly. Hollywood recycles dead actors. Why does Nicole Brown Simpson look exactly like Megan Kelly? I don't think we look exactly like at all. She has brown eyes. I have blue eyes. There's a lot of differences between us. There's a vague resemblance. Is Megan Kelly, Nicole Brown Simpson, and on and on. I am going to put on this video some pictures of the young Megan Kelly in Syracuse, New York, where I grew up. I was born in Illinois, moved to Illinois. I there you have it, guys. Proof that it's not Nicole Brown. You see that little boy on that tire swing? Yep, that's proof that Megyn Kelly is not Nicole Brown. All you need to do is have a little boy sit on a tire swing. And as long as that little boy kind of looks something like what you would figure a really young Megyn Kelly would look like, well, conspiracy theory debunked, right? And might I also add, <laughs> I mean, am I right? <laughs> am I right? I have a long, or moved to Syracuse, I have a long history of being alive in my own skin under my own name, people. You got to let it go. Focus on getting the help you need. Um, like go outside, smell the fresh air, get some rest, see real people, stay off the internet. I think that's. Go outside, smell air, touch the grass, talk to people, 
Stay off the internet. <laughs> oh, wait. I'm here watching you on the internet, dumb bitch. If I stay off the internet, I won't be able to watch your video telling me that you're not her. Right? I would have to be on the internet in order to see this in the first place. I am a professional YouTuber, so therefore I am required to be on the internet. I'm only talking about this because you are talking about this and I find it entertaining, so therefore I know my audience will most likely find it entertaining. You are giving me content to talk about on the internet. But I guess I should just go outside, smell some air, touch some grass, and it'll all go away. As long as I go outside and smell some air, touch some grass, talk to people, then she won't be Nicole Brown anymore. And it'll all go away forever. That sounds like a good plan. Let's all just go outside and pretend none of this ever happened. <laughs> That's a great plan. Pretend you never heard any of this and just go outside, man. People try and use that now as like an insult to me. So I've even had like uh, people show up to my channel and be like, bro, you need to go outside and get some air and touch the grass. You're going crazy. See what I mean? So they try and use that, like, if you don't go outside and smell the air and touch the grass, then you're just going to be a crazy weirdo who thinks Megyn Kelly might have been Nicole Brown. If you were outside touching grass, you wouldn't be so crazy. See how they, they can use, like, you need to go outside against you as an insult? Okay. I do agree. I like to go outside and get away from this crazy horse shit. But when I return back inside, I can still see that there's some horse shit afoot that needs to be pointed out. Smarty Pants coming in, says one picture, I'd be busy faking documents. Yeah, man, that one picture of a kid on a tire swing is enough to debunk the whole theory. the number one piece of advice. Stay off the internet if you are prone to this kind of thinking. It's not your friend. Debt. You can go to bed thinking about it and you can wake up thinking about it too. Here's the truth. The system traps you in debt. High interest credit cards and loans then make it nearly impossible to pay off the debt you have accumulated. And then insane inflation keeps you stuck paycheck to paycheck. It's just this ongoing cycle. Done with debt can be your lifeline. Done With Debt has an ingenious new strategy. Oh, and guess what, guys? This video where she's telling you she's not Nicole Brown and you're a crazy cuckoo if you think so, she's sponsored. She has a sponsor and has to read a script. In a video where she's telling you she's not Nicole, there's a sponsor. Who needs her to say these exact lines about getting out of debt because of this credit program that she's affiliated with, obviously? Because, of course, if you're going to make a video saying that you're not someone else, you should also make sure to have a sponsor and sell some shit to people, right? No, Jake, it's because she wants to help people get out of debt. She's a great lady trying to help people get out of debt, sir. All right. Well, guys, did that convince you that she's for sure not Nicole? I got to say, it wasn't convincing enough for me. I don't know for sure if it is Nicole Brown. I got a few theories I'm going to give to you guys. But she didn't do a good job of debunking the theory. The theory. And instead came off a little guilty trying to cover it up in that video. Kind of makes me think maybe it is even more so. But check it out. I got another theory too. And one of my subs, and I forget who, brought this up. He said, 
Nicole Brown did become Megan Kelly, but the new Megan Kelly is a different Megan Kelly and not the same. So they did a double switcheroo with the Megan Kelly. And so I got to thinking, if you were to find, let's say, a man who can wear a mask and pretend to be Megan Kelly, so good that people think it's Megan Kelly, you could in fact then have that person say that they aren't and never were Nicole Brown and they would be telling the truth. So the double switcheroo, if they have a Megan Kelly lookalike now pretending to be Megan Kelly, who was Nicole Brown, she can go on camera or he can go on camera and say, I was never Nicole Brown. And it will be true. And anyone who says that person was Nicole Brown would be wrong. So the double switcheroo adds this whole other monkey wrench to the mix. And so I have to consider that Nicole Brown became Megan Kelly, and then they switched out Megan Kelly with a different Megan Kelly. Just in case they wanted to really throw people off the scent. All right. I got a super chat that just came in. Let me go rustle it up. Uh, Anime of Sports says, I would doubt you, bro, but I've only seen you be wrong once. Regardless, troll the hell out of her. Hilarious, she responded with Snapchat filter on. Dude, you could tell through post-production that her face was made to look as if she has zero blemishes and has just perfect skin, right? Glowing, perfect skin, and she's in her 50s. Yeah, right. Sure, dude. And then meanwhile, I go dig up an old picture that doesn't have the filter. And you can see makeup caked all over the face. And you can see pores and wrinkles, as you should. All right. Yeah, it was weird. It was like I had this gigantic burst of viewers. And then like... Two, three hundred of them all disappeared at once. It was very weird. I don't get it. But whatever. It's all good in the hood with me. The ones who are here, you know, to get all the information and watch the whole thing are going to stick around. And the looky loos who are just here to watch for 10 minutes, you know, they come and they go. Whatever. So check this out. If I type in uh, Denise Brown Simpson. This is Nicole Brown Simpson's sister. And now you have this new monkey wrench here where this chick also looks like Nicole Brown and kind of looks like Megyn Kelly. So then there's a separate theory that Nicole Brown was Denise Brown and there was never a, re a Nicole Brown, that there was only a Denise Brown who pretended to be Nicole Brown but then went back to being Denise Brown. But then my question is, well, so Denise Brown is also Megyn Kelly? See, so this is another facet that takes it uh, in, in a slightly different direction. There's people who claim this is Nicole Brown right here. So all I can say is that the story that they gave us has holes in it, doesn't add up. But as far as Megyn Kelly is Nicole Brown or Nicole Brown is Denise Brown, I can't say for sure, 100%. There's no way for me to 100% prove it either. But there's something here. There's more than meets the eye. And look at everyone's chin. Like, look at all these chins on these. What's up with the damn chins, man? Seriously. It's like something weird with all the chins on these people. So I can't 100% put my finger on whether Denise Brown is Nicole Brown is Megyn Kelly or whether Denise Brown is Nicole Brown was once Megyn Kelly and then they replaced Megyn Kelly with a different lookalike Megyn Kelly who now says she's not Nicole 
and is telling the truth. <laughs> so I can't 100% get to a conclusion and call it case closed. But what I will say is there's some weird shit going on with this case. And I don't believe the mainstream story. And I don't totally buy this Megan Kelly story either. How far that rabbit hole really, really goes, I don't know. I've only dug into it a little bit. And I found enough to know the shit ain't right. Something ain't legit about that. And I will never believe the official story about any of that stuff. And at the same time, I will go to my grave not knowing the full truth. So that's what sucks about not knowing the full truth about something, but knowing that the story you heard on TV is totally not true. You're always stuck knowing only part of the truth. You know the part that it's not true, but you don't know the full truth. And that's what, what plagues me being a truther is that I go to my grave knowing so much is not true, but I can't put together all the pieces of all the things to figure out what truly is the truth. All right. But just the comparisons alone between the sister, Megan, and Nicole, pretty interesting. Let me pull up the other one. And the fact that this conversation, uh, you know, is all over social media platforms. It's not something that just only, you know, guys like me have brought up. It's spread across social media platforms to where a lot of people are talking about it. To where she had to make that video with Adam Carolla addressing it. Zach Frederick says, well, Jake, don't say you'll go to your grave not knowing the truth about it. You might not ever find out in your life, but maybe at some point you will. Well, yeah, you know, upon death, uh, when my brain releases the spirit chemical, it might be instantly thrusted upon me all the truths that I never knew. But I, while I'm living in this flesh bag suit, uh, I'm not going to be able to get to the bottom of a lot of these things because there's just no way for me to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just a dude here in the office looking at things on the internet. I can get to the point where I know the official story is fake, but I can't quite get to the point where I know 100% all the details of how it was all put together and set up, you know? Nathan Milham says, do you think you're closer, you're the closer truther to the truth? Uh, there's lots of people talking about lots of stuff. I stick more towards like fake news and stuff. So, you know, and fake sports and stuff. So there's different people covering different subjects. And I don't want to judge you know, everybody across the whole internet and say, yes, for sure I am. But I will say that I don't find other channels covering all the topics that I cover quite like I cover them. So I will say I'm a unique truther to where 
it seems like the all the variety of topics I cover and the way I go into it is different than others to where you can't compare me to someone else and say, oh, Jake is just like this other dude or Jake's a knockoff of this other truth or guy. See what I'm saying? And then there's people who cover subjects that I just don't talk about really much at all, you know? So uh, I'm not going to claim that I'm closer to the truth than all the rest. Yes, uh, the TikTok truthers are quite annoying. I've seen TikTok truthers, we'll call them, take, you know, old debunked info from 2015 from Eric Dubé and then repeat it now on TikTok and they'll get like 500,000, a million views. And they'll be like, the sun and the moon go around in circles over the earth and we live under a dome and we're surrounded by ice wall and they'll get like a million views. And it's like, dude, you literally just parroted some shit from 2015 and you're, and you're getting a million views on that now. Yeah. Yeah, David, I uh, threw some of my NFL rig stuff on TikTok just to test it out, and uh, it did really well. And then they changed the algorithm because my NFL rig videos blew up and were getting hundreds of thousands of views. And so they changed the algorithm, and then the NFL rigged videos over there were only getting like 2,000 views. So I was like, okay, 200,000 one week and then 2,000 the next. I see what you did. So... And then I, I couldn't stand the other content that was on TikTok. Like if I just opened up the app, there would be some chick like shaking her butt, spreading her legs or some fat bitch in a bikini, like being gross. It was like putrid content that like I just got rid of it and deleted it out of my phone. So I haven't uploaded to TikTok in a, in a long time, but I did try uh, uploading some NFL content. Like I said, they... It worked at first, and then they changed the algorithm. Uh, Coherence777 says your NFL stuff is amazing. Well, thank you. I know I picked up a lot of subs through my NFL content. But this channel dates back to 2016, and it is a truth channel. And so if you look at my old videos, this channel started by talking about the earth being flat, not by talking about football. So if you go back and look at my old content, there's years and years and years of me breaking down fake space missions, breaking down how the earth is in a globe. And then two seasons ago, uh, I started covering the NFL being fake and that content blew up and that's good. And I picked up a lot of awesome people because of it. The only issue I have is that some of the subs have never looked into any other conspiracy outside of football being rigged. And so they watch my other content and they go, whoa, dude, this is too much. You're saying OJ never killed anyone, bro. Just stick to football, bro. And those guys piss me off. And some of them I even ban from the channel because they've only been around for six months and they've never, ever seen any of my other content. And they don't realize that, you know, the channel wasn't a football channel. So it's, it's an interesting dynamic. I have to try and juggle two audiences. The old audience doesn't care about football so much. And they want hardcore conspiracy stuff. And then the new audience that came in because of football, they're not ready, not all of them, for hardcore conspiracy stuff. And they're like, whoa, bro, just stick to NFL being rigged, bro. I can't handle any other things besides football. 
And so for those people, I say, just come back when football season starts. And for those of you who can handle it, awesome. This is what I like to see. I came here for the football, then Jake woke me up to more truth. That is what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to check out the other content and realize, oh yeah, I'm talking other truth besides football being fake. Football being fake is just one of the things that I talk about in the world. The other sports are fake too. Do I want to just cover sports being fake? No but it does get more views than other stuff. So I get a lot of views talking about football being fake, but I'm not going to pigeonhole myself into only talking about football because it makes people uncomfortable who've never looked into anything else. You see what I'm saying? Holy shit. I somehow lost like 400 viewers all at once. That is, this is the, the, the amount of people watching on this stream has been the most wacky I've probably ever seen. I don't think I've ever seen me have 600 people and then three, four minutes later, I have 200 people. So something is what, so they must be like uh, messing up my screen or doing something causing people to stop watching because uh, I'm seeing it go down like nonstop on my end. So weird. Tom N says, I came on for NFL, but love the other content. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. That is so weird, dude. We had like 700 people watching, and then it went boo, down to like 400, and then shot back up to 600, and then within like a couple minutes span of me talking, it's literally just plummeting now. That is so weird. And usually I can talk about whatever. And there's always at least two to three hundred, no matter what. That's just so weird. Frosty says, I see 652. Yeah, and on my end, it says 127, which is drastically low <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah, they, dude, they've been doing some weird stuff to my channel, bro, because like every single time I go live, 15 subs will get taken away every, every single time. No matter how many people watch. And then if I upload a random short of some guy who's high out of his mind being stupid, they'll give me 15, 20 subs right back. So if you're wondering why I've been uploading random shorts, it's because they steal my subs if I don't do it. So I have to upload random shorts every day to counteract them stealing my fucking subs every day. It's ridiculous. So the reason why I'm up, I'm having to do shorts is because they'll just fucking every day just steal the subs. But if I upload a short of a guy being a retard on drugs, oh, well, then they'll give me subscribers. Then I've earned my subscribers for the day. Oh, okay. And now it says I have 66 people watching. Now it says 38 people watching. How is this? Let's go down to it's just me. It's just going to be me. I'm going to lose the entire audience. Let's do it. Just me. By myself. Streaming for nobody. After I had 700 people here. Let's do it. Let's do it all the way to zero. Come on. I can count more people here in the chat commenting. <laughs> uh. Now, do you guys... See, when I say YouTube messes with my channel, I get these reactions from people like, whatever, quit crying, shut up. 
You're just saying that because people are unsubbing from you because you suck. That's what happens whenever I make a post or a comment that YouTube is messing with my channel and doing dirty shenanigans. There's always trolls who say, no, uh, it's because your channel sucks and nobody likes you and they're all choosing to unsub. And everyone right now is not watching you because you suck. That's what happens if I fucking mention that weird stuff goes on, which pisses me off. And then I ban those people. But I'm, I'm totally legit when I say that weird shit happens to my channel, right? This is some weird shit. So whenever I point out that YouTube does funky shit to my channel, I always have to ban 10 trolls who say, no, they don't. People just don't like you because you suck. Okay. So I have 10 people watching YouTube says, but here's one guy, two guy, three guy, four guy, five guy, six guy. I can count more people here in the chat and prove that there's more than that. This is so fucking weird. This is so weird, dude. Miguel says, we all love you, bro. All 10 of you guys. <laughs> so wacky. Thanks, Miguel. All right. YouTube. Go ahead, make it go to zero. I know it's full of shit. You're messing with me. I already presented my OJ info. I already broke down the truth. I already woke people up. So mess with the stream all you want, you sons of bitches. Anyone messing with my stream on the other end, you're a piece of shit. Look at you messing with my stream. This is what your life is. This is your job. You have to mess with my stream. That's what you do for a living. Yeah, I'm talking to you on the other end, messing with my stream. I bet you sleep like a baby at night, knowing that you messed with a Jake the Asshole stream while he had 700 people watching. Vince says, Jake, you're the man. Jake, you, you tone hates people that seeks truths and try to wake people up. I'm grateful that Algo suggested your channel in September. Thanks, man. Yeah, so the only time the Algo uh, recommends me is when I'm talking about the NFL being rigged. When I talk about the NFL being rigged is when the channel blows up and picks up 200 subs a day. Sometimes four or five hundred in a day. I've had days where I've picked up a thousand subs in a day, but only if I'm talking about fake football. Talk about any fucking thing else. Steal my subs. Steal my subs. Just fucking steal my subs. I put out a video about the NBA being rigged and they stole 10 subs away. Like a video about the NBA being rigged causes 10 people to unsub, but football being rigged causes 30,000 over a course of one season to show up and sub. Yeah, okay. So that just goes to show you the Jake the Asshole channel should probably be at 750,000 subscribers or more. And my subscriber count is artificial, smaller than it should be. The opposite of everyone else on YouTube who's got an artificial sub count too big for what it should be. See? So my sub count, obviously, should be way more than it is. All the, the views should be way more than it is. On my end, it says 14 watching. <laughs> and then if I go to my watch page, 
It says nine are watching. Oh, well, whatever, I guess. All right, well, I guess I should stop letting it distract me because I guess that's the whole purpose is for it to distract me. It could still be 600 or 700 and whatever. Who knows? Timothy Ryan says they just unsubbed me. You know, I've been thinking for a while I need to change the, the name of the channel and get rid of the asshole out of the name. So I, I need to change the name. I'm hoping it'll help somehow. Maybe less comments will get deleted. Maybe less shenanigans if I change the name. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. Dude, I've been hearing this for years. People have told me for like, I don't know, five, six years that they were unsubbed. Some people have told me that they've been unsubbed multiple times. So my question is how many people got unsubbed, didn't notice, just never figured it out. How many people did I lose? <laughs> now I get it. Some people are going to stop liking me and unsub because they stopped liking me. That I get. But I battle this on a daily basis. And I'll be looking at uh, the analytics on my end. And literally, I can refresh the screen and they'll take three subs away within a minute of me just refreshing the screen. And it's like, oh, yeah, three people while I was looking at the screen and refreshed it all decided they didn't like me at the same time. Yeah, at three in the morning when I'm looking at the screen. Yeah, you know. Martin uh, Gingerick says, I can't like the video. It's been exhausted. Yep, yep. I, I see this stuff happen all the time, guys, to my channel. And if I say anything about it, then people just talk shit. Let me go to my studio and see what's up. Now, my studio shows that I haven't lost a bunch of subs. It shows that I'm about where I was before I started. So it's not reflecting on my end that I just lost a bunch of subs. So I don't know. And now it's like not letting me go to my channel. <laughs> Weird. Hmm. Risky Creeper says, no one is messing with you. It's YouTube. No, YouTube is messing with the channel, obviously. I think that, that live stream I just did was, <laughs> uh, I don't know, maybe they didn't want you to watch. This guy says his internet went down here while watching. Hmm. 
resource has been exhausted. And this is a this is all new. This is a new one. They haven't done this before. I've never seen my stream plummet from a shitload of people watching to like hardly any. My channel won't ever have this little of people watching. There'll always be more, of course. So never seen this. This is a new one. And I just so happen to cover, you know, a controversial subject and make some really good points. YouTube, this is a comedy stream. It's a big comedy performance, all for entertainment's sake. It was all just a big joke, you sillies. Why don't you let me finish my comedy stream? Stop messing with me. Uh, Dominic Perry says, did you see the meme of Bull and Melinda Gates replaced? Yes, I have covered that in the past. I think Kevin Klein is Melinda Gates. In fact, I'll pull it up right now. Why not? to find the picture. Here we go. There you go. What do you think? I think it's a dead ringer, personally. I mean, to me, once I saw that one once, I'm like, well, that pretty much solves that. Are all my mods still here? Did any of my mods get bounced or anything? I see Sunflower. I think I saw David. Is uh, Rose and uh, Jonna still here? Making sure none of my mods got bounced or anything weird. Okay, Andy's here. All right. Uh, do I think Planet X is real? No, I don't uh, think there's any sort of Nibiru or extra planet. I don't believe in outer space the way they tell us. So planets are basically like wandering stars, and stars are not distant suns. So once you figure out stars are not distant suns, then you realize planets aren't, you know, gas balls or terra firma that we can travel to. So then that takes away stuff like Nibiru and Planet X. Weird. Usually, usually Jonna and, and, Rose are always here, and now I haven't seen them at all. This is weird.
JMAX says a bunch of people are saying YouTube is down on Twitter. Oh. So if there is some sort of technical deal going on at the same time as I'm running my stream, that could also be part of the deal. Wow, what are the odds that something technical might happen right when I'm running my stream, though? Okay, Rose says she's here. Huh. This is so weird. I've just never had this happen before. So this is a new one. I've had them do several weird things to my channel. I've had them shut the entire comment section off and me turn it back on and then them shut it back off again and then me turn it back on and then shut it back off again. I've had that happen. I've had them, you know, get rid of comments, hide comments from me. Um, all sorts of weird shit. You know what I mean? Slap my videos with an 18 or older deal to where way less people are likely to click on it because of it. All sorts of stuff. But this is a new one. This one's different. Here's an interesting question. Uh, Omar from The Wire says, do you think the ultra rich elite and fake dead celebs go to, say, Antarctica, underground Atlantis, or where do the fake death celebs go? Epstein, Gates, Proudsy, WEF. I, I've asked the same question, and I can't prove it, prove it, but I feel like some of them get repackaged to play new roles, and then maybe some of them do get to like go retire out of the public eye. And as far as where they get to go, you know, I've always thought, since you're at the earth is in a globe, that there's extra land being hidden from us. So if there's extra land being hidden from us, then it would make sense that there could be a place where elites and uh, dead celebrities get to finish out their life out of the public eye. Uh, whether or not uh, it's like beyond Antarctica or, or in what direction, I couldn't tell you. Uh, whether or not Atlantis exists or ever really did exist, I can't tell you because I'm basically like a barnyard animal stuck here in the United States and I have to get permission just to leave. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so beings, I can't prove any of it. I'm stuck not knowing just as you are. And so it's an interesting question, but, uh, the one I would doubt the most, I doubt the story of Epstein Island because I think it's more likely it's made up. So I think the Epstein story is more made up for TV and to get a bunch of sheeple to buy into like fake conspiracy theories about a guy who maybe never even existed. And then they can say, oh, did you hear Tom Hanks and Oprah went to Epstein's Island because I saw on the flight log and me, me, me. And they can get you talking about a bunch of stupid shit that maybe never even happened. Right. So I don't dive down the Epstein trail completely because I've seen other people like run with it as if like they know all about his island and everyone who's been there and everything that happened on the island. Whereas I'm like, dudes, he might have been a made up person. Uh, Richie from Boston is still around, and uh, he actually won as the one of the most popular impressions that I do. So he's over on uh, BitChute these days. And I think he does have a YouTube channel where he just does his overlander camping stuff. I'm pretty sure he has a, vid a channel on YouTube where he's like overlander or something. Somebody probably knows. Jailbait overlander. Yes. So he's still around on YouTube as jailbreak. I said jailbait. <laughs> jailbreak overlander. But he's also, I think he's on BitChute, still doing his regular stuff. I've been telling you for years now, and nobody seems to want to listen, that the Chinese nano drones are making their way to the United States. 
And this was years ago that I told you. So, of course, they're already here. And after the last eclipse, as we were told, a million bazillion cicadas are about to be set loose. And these aren't just going to be any cicadas. These cicadas have had sexual relations with the Chinese drones. And they have created a new breed of cicada crossbred with Chinese drones. It's very high tech, very sophisticated, and very evil. And when these cicadas come back and they start crossbreeding with the Chinese drones, you're going to see a whole lot of stuff happen that was mentioned in the Bible. At any rate, you're going to need to repent for your sins. And at any rate, I digress. You can like, share, and subscribe. Or don't. There you go. And then in the second group vote, I did two group votes with all the voice impressions that I do. The two that were voted the, the, the most popular Arnold Schwarzenegger and Richie from Boston. Out of all the impressions, those were voted the favorites. So now I have to do a Richie from Boston uh, versus Arnold Schwarzenegger vote off to see who wins the favorite Jake the Asshole impression. Do you remember when I said screw your freedom? I technically did not mean school your freedom in a bad way. I meant school your freedom in a good way. What you need to do is you need to reinforce your freedom with the screws. You need to take the freedom and you need to reinforce it with, your, with screws. And when you reinforce it, it makes it stronger. So what I was technically trying to say was that your freedom needs to be reinforced and very much strengthen it it's stronger. And so that is why when I said screw your freedom, I meant it in a very positive way. And there were people who took what they said in a negative way. Like I was saying, screw your freedom. No, I, mean, I meant your freedom needs to be reinforced with screws. You need to get down. You need to take the chemical concoction. I have taken at least three chemical concoctions. I got pumped up, not once, not twice, but three times, the lady. And then I got down. I got down to the chopper. I like to say chopper because it saves me time from saying helicopter. If I have to say helicopter, it takes too much time. So when I am running away from the bad guys and they are shooting at me, I say, get to the chopper to save the time. Because if I say, get to the helicopter, it would take too much time and the bad guy to shoot me. All right. Wow. They're going hardcore tonight, aren't they? I guess I picked a hell of a night to run a stream, huh? Do you remember when I became the governor of the California? That just shows you that anything can come true. Here in America, no one can live the American dream. Even if you have a master like me, you can still live the American dream. Folks, I think this more than proves that these damn globalists, they're watching me right now, and they don't want me telling you the truth about these damn frogs being gay. They're trying to stop me from getting the truth out about the frogs being gay. So what they're doing is they're maxing out the YouTube servers, and they're unsubscribing me from my subs. It's what's happening, and these damn globalists, it's going to serve them right when we hang them up outside of Washington, D.C. And I slice them up and I eat their ass. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find these globalists. I'm going to track them down. And then I'm going to tie them up, chop them up, and I'm going to eat their ass. Of course, using non-violence. I don't condone violence in any way, but I'm going to eat my neighbor's ass. I got a leftist liberal neighbor. He's got a nice, plump, juicy rump roast. I'm fixing to eat my neighbor's ass. 
But of course, I'm going to be nonviolent about the whole thing. I'm going to do it very nicely and politely. Playing Tennis 50 says, hi, Jake. Thank you for making me laugh and making me feel better, my friend. You're welcome. I went to one of Puff Daddy's parties. Him and Justin Biebs was doing some booty hole stuff, and they was trying to get me to join, but I was like, no, no, boo-boo. I ain't trying to do no butthole stuff with you. That was the last time I went to one of Puff Daddy's parties. I think Suge knows who shot Suge. It was the same nobody who done shot Tupac, which was the same nobody who done shot MLK. And if nobody shot MLK, it must have been the same nobody who shot Malcolm X. And if ain't nobody be shooting anybody, don't nobody have time for nobody being shot. If you know what I'm saying, boo-boo. Did you hear Cat Williams dropping those truth bombs? Dude, Cat Williams is totally, he, he's like, Hollywood's going to have to get rid of him if he keeps dropping these truth bombs. Did you hear what Cat Williams said about Puffy doing booty stuff? Oh, shit, look, we suddenly have an audience again. You know what it was? My Cat Williams impression was so damn good that it bloated my audience again. So now I'm up to 290 people watching, and just a minute ago it said 12? Okay. <laughs> I guess YouTube is fixed now. Oh, look, we got one of those dudes who couldn't handle when I said Robin Williams maybe was the president of Argentina. Oh, you think he's dead because that's what you heard on TV? Cool, dude. Have fun believing everything you, you hear on TV. Chump. And all you chumps who dissed me yesterday when I said Robin Williams might be the president of Argentina, you can kiss my ass. That's right. What I'm doing must be working because look at all these people watching. <laughs> All right, check this out. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it up right now, and we're gonna talk about this because I made a community post, and I was attacked by several of my own subs, and most of them have only been who who attacked me had only been subbed a short amount of time, and they were like, "Dude, Robin Williams is dead. You should just stick to NFL content. Never say anything like this ever again." Wah. So now I'm going to pull it up and show you why I think this could be Robin Williams. Okay, President of Argentina. Pull it up right now. All right. Dude, that right there. Kind of reminds me of Robin Williams right on site. That right there kind of reminds me of Robin Williams. If you don't think so, I don't understand how you don't think it kind of looks like him. And then there's other pictures that don't look as much like him. But then there's some where I'm like, dude. That's straight up Robin Williams right there, dude, in a mask. And so there were some people who immediately go to this as their defense. It doesn't look anything like Robin Williams. Yes, the fuck it does. Of course they're not going to make Robin Williams play the part of president of Argentina without giving him a disguise. Do you think they're going to let Robin Williams play the part of Mrs. Doubtfire without giving him a disguise? Jake, Robin Williams looks nothing like Mrs. Doubtfire. So Robin Williams definitely wasn't Mrs. Doubtfire. 
because Robin Williams is a man and Mrs. Doubtfire was an English grandma. So they can't be the same person. See how stupid that sounds? We literally watched the movie where he turned into a grandma in the movie. And they showed that he wore a mask, prosthetic, fake teeth, wig, the whole nine yards. Changed his voice to sound like a grandma who's from England and pulled it off so well that everybody fucking loved the movie and his family in the movie thought that it was a grandma and not their dad. So, you can't have Robin Williams pretend to be Mrs. Doubtfire without putting him in a disguise. So when I say this person might be playing the role of this person, and you show up and go, they don't look the same. Well, no fucking duh. They're not going to take the same guy and stick him as a different role without changing anything. If you think they might do that, then you're fucking stupid. So everyone who attacked me, like it's a physical impossibility that that guy might be Robin Williams, hey, I'm just pointing out it could be Robin Williams. Maybe he played the part once or twice. We currently have a president, Joe Biden, who's not the original Joe Biden. So if somebody can put on a Joe Biden mask and pretend to be Joe Biden, if they can have 10 different actors pretend to be Joe Biden, why the hell couldn't Robin Williams pretend to be the president of Argentina? All you would need to do is change his hair color. Check. Let's see. Not put him in front of Americans and put him in front of some other country. Check. Have him learn the language for like a year. Check. Seems to me if he can be an English grandma perfectly, then he can be the president of Argentina. If you think that's impossible, that's fine. But you're wrong. It's not impossible. It might not be him. Maybe he played the part once or twice. But I'm just pointing out the possibility these things can be done. So everyone who attacked me yesterday, and I found a lot of you who attacked me for pointing this out. Hey, the O.J. Simpson trial was fake. Maybe Megyn Kelly is Nicole Brown. So that means it opens the door for other celebrities to be replaced too. So if Alex Jones might be Bill Hicks, that means you have to consider other celebrities might be playing other celebrities. And so sometimes I will point at a celebrity and say, hey, maybe it was this other celebrity. That's not a crazy theory. Doesn't make me crazy for, for pointing it out because this is Hollywood and they do shit like that. And the reason why I'm, I'm angry is because I had to deal with it yesterday. People are like, dude, just stick to talking about football being rigged. You sound crazy if you say this other stuff. It's like, just come back when football season starts. Yeah, how about that? We're up to like 500 viewers again. Yeah, so that just showed you whatever the hell that was, was all just some wacky wonky shit. But whatever. I'm not into the clone theory as much. I don't like to call imposters wearing masks clones because there's a difference. A clone suggests you grew a human in a test tube who looked exactly like the other human, and then you taught them how to be that person, right? I don't buy that. See, to, to me, that's, that's a stretch. I think you can clone a human, but to train them to be exactly like this other celebrity, that's the hard part. You can't make a, a clone come out with the exact same personality as another. So if you clone me, you're going to end up with a baby Jake, right? You're not going to end up with a dude who has my exact talent and skill. I don't understand how you would clone me and end up with a dude who's exactly 100% like me, plays all the same bass lines as me, and does all the same voices perfectly as me. No, wouldn't it be a baby Jake that you would have to raise? So 
Can you clone some kids and then do some disgusting stuff to them? Sure. But cloning a celebrity and then having that celebrity pretend to be the celebrity just perfectly, that seems to be a stretch. I prefer imposter wearing a mask or imposter lookalike. So for instance, I don't think Eminem is a clone. I think it's a fucking dude pretending to be Eminem. I don't think Dave Chappelle is a clone. I think it's a dude pretending to be Dave Chappelle. I think the clone story muddies the water of truth. No, Jake, they grew a new Dave Chappelle in a test tube and shit him out. And the Dave Chappelle's cloned. And then they cloned his family too. So that's why I don't like the clone theory. I like clone theory as far as creating people, but not like shitting one out that's an exact carbon cut copy of another. I would have to see someone shit out a 100% perfect copy of me that does all the same stuff I do for me to be convinced of that. Uh, I don't know if Taylor Swift is Zena LaVey, but that is an interesting theory. Yes, again, can you clone a person? Sure, but you can't make an exact carbon cut copy of that person who's going to act and be the same because a person has experiences during their lifetime and those experiences mold you into who you are. So you can't just create a new person out of a test tube who's 40 years old and have him have all the same experiences as me, right? If you shut out a Jake Gibson who looked the same as me, how would it be the same as me if it didn't live my life? See what I'm saying? So that's where the, the cloning thing, you can't just say that everyone's just a clone. See, it would make more sense that they would clone kids, you know, and then do messed up stuff to the kids without any ramifications of getting caught because they're just doing it to these clone kids underground. That would make more sense. Turning clones into sex slaves makes sense. Having like a clone Eminem, that doesn't make sense. What makes sense is there's a dude pretending to be Eminem. Okay. So I, I've, I've had to break that down for years. And so I'll, and it, I have to go into detail about it because that clone thing, it, it can be used to cover up imposters playing the role of a celebrity. Yeah, see, I don't claim to know everything. In fact, when I don't know something, I'm honest with you guys and tell you I don't know. And when I'm making a claim or an assumption, I'm honest about that. Whereas a lot of YouTubers make claims as facts and don't tell you that they can't prove it. They'll just say something as if they did prove it. So you're watching one of the only guys that's honest with you when I can't prove something. Rumford C says, Jake knows what he doesn't know, which allows him to outwit the yappers. Exactly. I'm not going to sit here and pretend to know all about a subject that I don't know about. There are certain subjects that throw me for a loop where I, I, I just don't know. Like when you talk about these certain buildings that are so intricate and well-designed and old that there's no way that they could have been built the way they said they were built. That confuses the shit out of me, and I don't know how to explain it. You know what I mean? So, like, you know, uh, mud floods and Tartaria and the old buildings, you know, being created, uh, you know, in ways that don't seem to make any sense. Uh, 
yeah, stuff like that. I wish I could explain what the hell's going on. The stuff like that leaves me with more questions than answers, which is probably why I don't cover that stuff that much because I'm stuck not knowing, you know? Like there's uh, certain buildings that are designed in a certain way that are so intricate that thinking that like, oh yeah, hundreds of years ago, it was just, you know, people with primitive tools who built that, but they can't do it now. It's a lost art. And so it's like, okay, so now we have all this technology, but we can't reproduce some of these buildings and architecture structures. That's like saying we can't go back to the moon. <laughs> and I don't like that excuse. <laughs> Uh, Cesario Serrato with a donation. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Thanks for watching. So, yeah, there's a, a bunch of dudes who cover these subjects that, like, it's interesting and I find it, you know, entertaining and fascinating, but I, I can't do anything to like figure it out any further. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to like pull any more info out of it other than like, how the hell did they build that? You know what I mean? So I'm just stuck like wondering, well, how old is that building really? How did they do that? <laughs> and then since I don't know, I have nothing else to go on. You know what I mean? So stuff like that, I'll just admit, man, I don't know how they did it. Like the, the World Fair stuff, when you look into the old World Fairs and they would show up to a city and build all this shit somehow and then tear it all down and leave, the World Fair would leave town. And it's like, it's very interesting, but you can't like, you can't like go back and see it for yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, it's, it's tough. Some of these subjects that are really fascinating that you can't get to the bottom of it. You're just stuck wondering. Oh, Mr. All Caps is going to make me admit that I don't know about cloning. Flash in the pan is a genius. And he's talking in all caps because he's a cloning expert. Flash in the Pan was cloned. Therefore, he is a cloning expert. Everything Flash in the Pan has to say about cloning is 100% true, and I don't know anything about cloning. Was that good? Is that okay for you, Mr. All Caps? Did I do a good enough job explaining that you are the genius and I don't know anything? I hope that was good enough, sir. So if any of you guys want to go subscribe to him and listen to what he has to say about cloning, he knows everything. Literally the expert on the subject. I don't know jack shit. Was that good? Oh, I'm a child. Well, guess what a child might do? A child might throw a fit and ban you from the channel! <laughs> Couldn't wait to get rid of your ass. I baited you into calling me a child so that then I could ban you. <laughs> I don't think you're a genius about cloning. And I know more than you about cloning. I'm a genius about cloning and you don't know jack shit. What do you think of that? And I just banned you, so fuck off. <laughs> Indeed. Would anyone else like to tell me what I need to admit that I don't know about? Yes, he was going to force me to admit that I'm not a cloning expert. And of course he knows because he is.
Okay, Cesaro Serrato says she is sponsored by a group who claims to have an ingenious way to get you out of debt in this Ponzi pyramid scheme that's all about debt. Oh, yeah, you must, I don't know if you're, you're uh, behind in the stream or not. But yeah, at the end of the uh, Megan Kelly video where she claims she's not Nicole, she goes into a spiel about getting out of debt, which means it was like a sponsorship part and she's uh, promoting her, uh, a company to you know supposedly help you get out of debt. And yeah, isn't that great? She's got this ingenious way to get you out of debt in this Ponzi pyramid scheme that's all about debt. Yeah, exactly. Of course, because, you know, you know, if you're so dumb that you fall into debt, the best way to get out is to listen to someone like Megan Kelly. You know? Yes, Canadian punker. I've went over this so many times with the clone people. If you clone a 31-year-old, you get a baby version of that person. You don't get a 31-year-old. And even if you were to somehow be able to, like, make the person or the baby grow extra fast or whatever, when they come out of the test tube or whatever it is, right, they aren't going to have the exact same personality as the original because they wouldn't have lived any of the experiences. You know what I mean? So it's like... If no one lives in my body and experiences what I experience, you can create a living thing that looks exactly like me. But how the hell would they know how to play the bass like me unless they sat for years and practiced like I did? You know what I mean? How the hell would they be able to do these impressions that I do perfectly unless they watched the videos I watched specifically and practiced the, the same way I did? So you can't have a clone with the same personality as the original. It, it, it would be impossible. But could you take me and then create a baby out of that and then do some messed up stuff to the baby? Yeah, I'm guessing yes. Oh, look, he came back with an alternate channel, you guys. The same guy. He also calls himself John Candy. Why do you have a channel calling yourself John Candy? And then when I boot you out, you have to come back. I don't want you here. So if you're going to come back with multiple channels, I'm just going to delete all of them that I see. And you can keep coming back, but I'll just keep banning them. And then we'll see which one runs out of energy first. Okay? How's that sound? So I just banned that one. So now John Candy's gone. So the next guy who shows up with the all caps sounding like you, then I'll know it's you and I'll ban that one. And we'll just go through it until we, you run out of accounts. Okay? This isn't my first time dealing with a troll. It's really easy for me to hit the button. And if any of you guys have ever attempted to run a channel anywhere near like this one, then you would know that it's 100% necessary to ban people. If I don't ban people, trolls will take over and run wild and then promote each other and then try and make it look as if popular opinion on my page is that everyone hates me. So if anyone says, dude, don't ban people, freedom of speech, bro. Oh no, I don't get to have freedom of speech on here. So I'm not going to let trolls try and influence popular opinion on my page and use their fake sock accounts to double down and agree with each other about how much I'm a bad guy. So yeah, I ban the shit out of people here and for a good reason. Anthony Clay says, is Trump trial fake? Yeah, I already went over that earlier in the stream and I have a video breaking that down, but yes, 100% Trump trial fake. Nobody got killed. Oh, I was talking about, excuse me, OJ trial. My bad. I was talking about the OJ trial earlier, and you're, you're, you're saying Trump trial. So yes, the Trump trial is fake too, and uh, I went over that in like a separate stream. So here's how the Trump thing works. Trump's been arrested, and he's been indicted on a hundred counts of blah, blah, blah. 
that causes right wingers to love him even more. So everyone who loves Trump loves him twice as much if it appears he's in trouble. If it if the TV says orange man bad, orange man might go to jail. Trumpers react by saying orange man is fucking god and I worship him like Jesus. An orange man, I'm I'm gonna vote for him for sure. So that's what how that's how they get Trumpers to rally behind Trump is by having him get fake arrested. Yeah, Trumpers fall for everything the TV says in reverse. Well, if the TV says he's bad, it must be because he's good. Every Trumper in a nutshell falls for the same shit. The TV said orange man's bad, so therefore I'm going to worship the orange man because the TV don't want me to. They's trying to keep him from being president by talking bad about him all the time. And that's why I'm going to vote for him because they're trying to keep him from being president. <laughs> Trumpers are, are so easily duped. And then, of course, if you tell a Trumper that they're easily duped, they'll fire back like, well, you're just a dumb Joe Biden voter. Right? So anyone who says anything negative about Trump, it must be because they voted for Joe Biden. The first assumption of every Trumper. Say something negative about Trump. It must mean you support Joe Biden. It's like, well, I have a channel where I've called out Joe Biden as being replaced by actors and imposters. So I'm pretty sure that means I don't support him either. You tell a Trumper you don't support Joe Biden or Trump. Then they look at you like, well, well, then who are you going to vote for then? <laughs> they can't handle it. Anyone who doesn't like Trump must be a libtard. And if they say they ain't a libtard, it's because they're part of the deep state. <laughs> so the thing about voting is like, I live in a blue state. Maybe some of you guys live in a red state. Very few people in the United States live in a swing state. There's only so many swing states, you know, two or three swing states. All the rest are pretty much already set in stone. So California is worth the most electoral votes. That means California, since it's the most populated, worth the most electoral votes. It would be like the most important state. Well, it's a blue state automatically. So the more, most important state to win, automatically a blue state. So if you live in a blue state like California, why would you vote? It's already a blue state. So even if you think your vote counts, it would still be a waste of time. If I voted for Joe Biden, it's already a blue state. That would be a waste of time. If I voted for Trump, well, he's not going to win California because it's already a blue state. So even if you think your vote counts, in order for it to theoretically count, you would have to be in a swing state. In order for your vote to theoretically count, and even then, it doesn't count. It's just the illusion of choice. Exactly, Drexel McNuffin. I almost had you pegged for a troll earlier, and I almost bounced you, bro, but turns out you're not a troll. So check it out. I think Trump is going to be the president. And so I think all of this nonsense about him being indicted is to get right, right wingers to rally behind him more so than last time. I think this time they want every right winger and their mama on the Trump train. And so then when he wins, then they can have the black riots, of course, all the black people who are mad about it. And they can have this nice divide between hardcore Trumpers and then the, the BLMers who are upset. And you won't get that backlash if Joe wins again. See what I'm saying? If Joe wins again, Trumpers aren't going to go, 
tear down targets. <laughs> you know, Trumpers aren't going to go throw Molotov cocktails through windows and tear shit down. But BLMers will. So I think it makes the most sense for Trump to win. And so that's my prediction. Trump comes back as president for four years, and then they'll switch it back to a, a hardcore lefty in the election after that. So we'll probably go from Trump to like the rock and Oprah. <laughs> right. So once Trump leaves, you're going to need a super hardcore lib that the people rally behind. And I think the rock is probably going to be the guy. I don't know if it'll be right after Trump, but at some point the rock Dwayne Johnson is primed to be the president of the United States. And no, I'm not joking. Neo Doom says they unscribed me, they unsubscribed me too. Hey, everybody check and see right now if you're subscribed to my channel and if they unsubbed you and <laughs> resub. Action News Network says, I'm black and love Trump. You love a guy who promoted the jab? You love a man who told people to go get the shot? You love him? That's your hero? I wouldn't be saying stuff like that around here in my chat if I were you, because you might get some backlash for stuff like that. Because when he was president, he didn't exactly tell people the truth or do the right thing. Imagine being a black man who's in love with Donald Trump. Yeesh. Dave Sims says, when are we getting our jam on? Oh, I'm in the process of uh, figuring out what I need to build out my studio. And uh, so I need to get back to work on that. I just bought a uh, a few new things for my bass. And uh, uh, one of them, uh, I bought a compressor pedal for my bass. Holy shit, it made it sound so good. So I've been playing for years without a compressor pedal. And now I feel stupid because I tried a compressor pedal for the first time on my bass and it made it sound so damn good. I was like, how did I go for years without this pedal? So yeah, that's one of the next things I, I need to get to work on is, is building out, finishing it, building out my studio and, and recording some new jams. That's on the list, but I've been dragging my feet, of course. Every time some shit happens, I feel like I have to cover it, you know? Looks like I missed the super chat. Uh, Cherry Dr. Pepper 7 says, could Trump play the role of Antichrist to unite the world in a one world government? Uh, I'm thinking we might see a uh, maybe an assassination attempt on Trump, maybe a fake attempt. So if they really wanted to do something heavy, they could do... Uh, a fake assassination where he like fake dies that would cause a bunch of hardcore right-wing Trumpers to freak out. And then they could have actors, you know, go on shooting sprees or whatever <laughs> and tie it back to Trump getting shot. See what I'm saying? So they could do a whole bunch of stuff or they could have an attempt on Trump's life and make it look like people are trying to take his life. So, there's been some predicting predictive programming about Trump 
possibly being assassinated. So uh, that wouldn't shock me. Uh, as far as him being the Antichrist, I've heard people say Trump's the Antichrist, Obama's the Antichrist, uh, Joe Biden's the Antichrist. So I guess that's a matter of opinion. Um, and as far as one world government, uh, we already have a one world government. They just haven't officially announced it to the people yet. So they're still playing the charade that we have separate governments, but we already are under one world government. So they're just going to need to find the right event to unify us all, unite us all under one world government in our own minds. And I think that that will be fake alien invasion. Fake alien invasion is what they'll probably use to unite all the worlds as one. We need to come together as one to fight back against the aliens, you know, like Independence Day style. We all need to come together and put our differences aside to fight the aliens. So alien invasion card is the card that they can unite the world. Or if they were to collapse all the world currencies and try and unite us under one world currency. But I still feel like they need an event like a fake alien invasion to really get us to willingly jump on board with one world. But we already have one world government right now. They just haven't officially announced it. So there you go. There's my full thoughts on that. Cesaro Serrato says, right wing, left wing are two wings of the same bird of prey. Guess who the prey is? That's right. That's a common phrase everyone should, should repeat. Uh, right wing, left wing, both detach, are both attached to the same dirty bird. Right? And Trumpers have the hardest time with this because they like to say, no, uh Trump's better. You know, Trump's the lesser of two evils. So there's people who will agree, right wing, left wing, both tied to the same dirty bird. But, 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 but I just like Trump better than Joe Biden. So some people just can't let go of Trump and they just like his personality. And so they prefer him over Joe. And I get it. He's more entertaining than Joe. But when you really look at it, is there a lesser of two evil? No, they both work for the same evil. Joe works for evil and is being played by uh, actors and imposters. And Trump knows that Joe's being played by actors and imposters. He doesn't say anything about it, you know? So Trump's going along with the same bullshit that Joe Biden's going along with. And they work for the same bad guys. So you can't say one guy is the lesser of the two evils when they both work for the same evil. Hey, you guys, hit the thumbs up button. We had a really crazy stream today. I covered a bunch of stuff about OJ and Megyn Kelly earlier. And uh, then the, what, the number of people watching plummeted to like less than 10 people. At least that's what it said. And now we're back up to over 500 people. So, hey, hit the thumbs up. It's been a crazy stream, but let YouTube know that you like this stream. Straight up, every one of you watching right now, there's no reason why you shouldn't hit the thumbs up button, unless you truly didn't like it. And if you truly didn't like it, then why are you here? So those of you who are here enjoying it, let YouTube know that you are here and you like this content, you know? They, they disabled the thumbs up. You guys want to know why they disabled the thumbs up and thumbs down? Or they disabled the thumbs down number. Tori, they hid it. And the reason they hid the thumbs down number is because videos of Joe Biden giving a speech were getting thumbs down into oblivion. Mainstream news stories uh, about the jib jab were getting thumbs down into oblivion. And so... They got rid of the thumbs down because Joe Biden was getting thumbs down so much that they just hid the number of thumbs down and only show the number of thumbs up. 
So if you're wondering why YouTube stopped showing the number of thumbs down, and there's even some programs you can go still see the numbers, go back and look at some Joe Biden videos of some speeches that he gave just before they turned off the numbers. And you'll see tens of thousands of people smashing the thumbs down button. That's what they wanted to hide from you. They don't want you to know that people are thumbs downing Joe Biden by tens of thousands every video. So they just took it away. Makes it much easier for them to artificially inflate the thumbs up and just hide the thumbs down. Solar Flare says, I can respect you have a different political opinion than I do. I feel we need Trump to finish the work. What work? The work for the bad guys? Like come back again and, and promote the jib jab again? What if Trump comes back and then they say bird flu is now a pandemic and go get your jib jab and your business, you can't open a business. Everyone needs to stay home. Hopefully it won't take too long this time. So if Trump comes back and says that, you're all cool with that? You still support that? He did that once already. So he could do that again. And Trumpers, they do. They make an excuse no matter what. If Trump says, you should take the jib jab, I took it, you should take it. You know what Trumpers say? Well, he also said that you have your freedom to, to not take it. He said that you have freedom. So they make an excuse. Oh, so if he says the word freedom, then it's okay to promote the jab, as long as you say the word freedom afterwards. So a Trumper will make an excuse for Trump no matter what he does. Oh, did Trump do anything to stop uh, everyone's businesses from getting shut down? No. It was under his watch. Yeah, he's going to finish the job, putting a bunch of mom and pops out of business, finish that work. Yeah, you better pray. We all better pray that they don't bird flu us into another pandemic. We all know how that last one went. And let me tell you something. It, it was China's fault. And we're going to make China pay. I'm going to make China pay for all this. That's whose fault it was. It was China. That's what your guy said. Anyone here who supports Trump and doesn't like what I'm saying, your guy blamed China and said it was all China's fault and that he's going to make China pay for it. Yeah, that didn't happen. He didn't do jack shit to China. I would argue China owns this place. China owns this shithole. As we speak, it ain't the USA. It's owned by China. And you think it's the USA. It was China's fault. And we're going to make China pay. And when I come back, I'm going to implement Trumptricity in all your homes right after I make China pay. You know how much China's going to pay? Billions and billions and billions and millions and billions that China's going to pay. It's China. China. That's your hero? That's the guy you trust and love? Yeah, we have a different political opinion. Just a matter of differing opinions. I know Trump is a lying actor on the world stage who's full of shit, who promoted the jab, and you think he's a good dude who needs to finish his work. Yeah, just a little bit of a different political opinion. No, I'm not. And there's always one of you in every stream who wants to bring it up. Always wanting me to talk about it. As if you're trying to get me to say something to get myself taken down. No, I'm not. Are you? Is your mom? And you know why I sound agitated? 
because I deal with the world's worst trolls. You guys, I have the best audience and the worst trolls at the same time. Same fucking time. Same fucking place. Imagine having people say, Jake, you're a genuine guy and I love you. And they send me money and tell me how much they love me. And then the next comment is, you're a stupid ass who just makes shit up for views. I can't believe anyone fucking listens to your stupid ass. You see what I'm saying? And then the next comment is like, dude, you just blew my mind with this OJ stuff. Thanks for the great video. And then the next comment is, OJ did kill those people. And you're stupid if you think that he didn't. I can't believe you're actually getting people to believe this. Everyone here has a smooth brain. It needs to be locked up. See, so I have literally people who will be like, they'll give me the best compliments of the best audience. And at the same time, nasty shitbag trolls. And they all show up to the same spot. So it's hard for me to go from one extreme to the other when I read the comments, because I read the comments and they are literally one extreme to the next. So the ones that are super extreme that attack me and make me out like I'm just a bullshitter, just making all this up for views, just trying to get clicks, and I'm a bad guy for doing this. Yeah, those people are the ones who piss me off and make me have this attitude. The ones who are awesome and say cool things, you guys, I love. I love my audience who loves me. I hate my trolls. My trolls, I despise you. And I would beat your ass if I ever saw you. The people who love me, I love you too. Yeah, dude, Solar Flare, you probably don't belong here. I'm too extreme for you, dude. You should probably go watch someone who's less extreme, bro. See right here, one of my beautiful mods, she says, we love you, Jake, sends me money. This is what I mean. I love Jonna. She's a sweetheart. She's donated to the channel a bunch of times, countless times. And she's here for basically every live stream supporting me. Whenever I say something she thinks is funny, she lets me know. So I have some of the best subscribers any man on YouTube could ever have. And that's what makes me mad when YouTube unsubs my subs is because I have awesome subs. I have amazing subs. And I have some of the worst trolls imaginable. I've had trolls show up and bring up my dead dog just to try and hurt my feelings. Not kidding. Imagine a troll who's such a piece of shit that they want to hurt my feelings so bad that they have to bring up my dead dog to do so. Yeah, th these are people who exist and show up to the same place where the ones who say they love me. That's why I have this attitude where I go from one extreme to the next is because I deal with it every day. One extreme to the next every day. Whew. Thank you, Jonna. You are a sweetheart. Love you. All right. Cesaro Serrato says Trump and O'Biden are relatives. Don't forget Trump called himself the father of the government poison. Uh, so there's a one uh, theory that people say Trump is Elvis. And I don't buy into Trump being Elvis. And so that's a popular one that I've heard a bunch of times that Trump is Elvis. So not every celebrity replacement theory do I buy into, such as Trump being Elvis. To me, that one just never quite made sense to me. But there's people who say Trump is Elvis. So I don't jump on board with every single conspiracy theory where this person is claimed to be that person. Uh, Miguel says, please sing the Mexican song before you end this.
Hon ryttar honne in i henne. Nina Jonne Digalo. Insegnar jag där Moriaccio. En gen korion tegen mig henne. Är gen bariochi en mariachi. En tina lone tina mo. There you go. Every Mexican song ever written all rolled into one. If you were to combine every Mexican song that ever existed, that's exactly what it sounds like, of course. Whoa, got a bunch of super chats flying in here. Let me get up, try and get to them all. Dave Hess says, I love you, Jake. No homo. Thanks, bro. I love you too, no homo. All the no homo bro love. <laughs> all right. Let me make sure. Uh, Ryan Handy says, appreciate what you do, Jake. Hey, thank you. All you guys coming in right now with these super chats. They thank you guys. It's overwhelming this amount of support. And I think I got one from my man Saul. Saul says, uh, the world is ending, but talk to my boys over at Gold Co. Or don't. I'm out. The Chinese nano drones are literally going to end the world as we know it. You probably have less than a year left to survive. So you're going to want to buy gold, and you're going to want to use my promo code down below, and you're going to want to buy some, some storable food items for when the world ends. Because you don't want to be hungry and without a piece of paper that says you own gold when the world comes to an end. At any rate, I digress. Like, share, and subscribe. Or don't. I'm out. I got JL says, coming in late, what did I miss? Well, you kind of missed the whole thing. So I started out by breaking down the fake OJ trial. And then I... I uh, went into Megyn Kelly possibly being Nicole Brown Simpson, showed some examples, and then we watched uh, Nicole, or we watched Megyn Kelly say she's not Nicole, and then we discussed that video. And then weird shit started happening with the amount of people watching, and we I, I started just going off on a rant about YouTube. And then we've just been doing like open topic chat for the last like hour. So yeah, I'm about to wrap up the stream soon. We've been on here for almost three hours. So yeah, you pretty much missed all of it. So I recommend if you want to catch up, you go back and watch the stream at 1.25 speed when you're like going on a trip or something. So if you ever have an extra hour or two on a long drive, whatever, throw on one of my streams. And if you want to get through it quicker, 1.25 speed. And I think it makes me sound funnier when I talk a little faster. So there you go. Don Trump says he's a, a juicy puppet. <laughs> I gotta be careful, man. We know what plat we know what platform this is and who runs this thing, so Pretty much anytime anyone comes at me with the J word, I gotta like, <laughs> I have to kind of avoid it. Tyler says, you're right on like 60, 70% the things. Yeah, I think you're wrong about 30, 40% of the time about me though. <laughs> so you might be 30 to 40 percent wrong about that claim so therefore i might be 90 to 100 percent right so there's that got a donation from kevin arnold from the wonder years kevin arnold from the wonder years you guys remember wonder years 
What would you do if I sang out a tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Kevin Arnold going to go next door and get a kiss from Winnie Cooper. What the hell? I'm like having a flashback to my childhood in the 90s. Sorry, Kevin. I don't think you are Fred Savage from the Wonder Years. Sunflower says, yeah, good show. It was a good show. Did you guys enjoy the show tonight? I did. I had fun. It got a little stressful when the YouTube numbers went from 700 watching down to like less than 10 watching. That was a little wacky. But here we are, over 500 still watching. So I think this was a success. I think this here was a, a, a fine and dandy stream. I enjoyed it. I hope you did. And I'm thinking I'm going to have to do another stream sooner than later. I'm thinking I need to do a daytime stream early in the day for my European subscribers. So maybe in the next few days, I'll start the stream at like 11 a.m. Pacific or something, you know, noon Pacific. That way the people over in Europe can catch me. Because all the people in Europe are asleep right now. So they always miss my nighttime stream. So I need to do a daytime stream for all the European folks. So, and then in the, the early birds. So uh, I'm thinking maybe in a few days, I'll try and do that. Run a daytime stream. Okay. You guys have a great night. Have a great week. Thank you for watching. And uh, thank you to everyone who donated and participated here in chat. I love you all. And uh, screw you to all the trolls. <laughs> I hate you all. To all the people who I love, I love you. To all the people who are trolls, I hate you. And everyone who's just kind of in between, well, eh. All right. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Sunflower. Thank you, Jonna. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, everyone. All right, y'all have a great night. I'll catch y'all later. Good night. Peace.